Hey everyone, happy Monday. Thanks for joining me tonight for another craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's the time that we relax and craft together uh, here for about an hour. So tonight I am going to attempt to cut into my mom's sweater. So this is my mom's sweater uh, that her boyfriend from high school's mom knit and gave to her. It has been sitting around for, you know, that long. And my mom ice skated in it. She just, she loved it. Uh, I have acquired it and it's been sitting around here and uh, I, it doesn't fit well. So I want to turn it into a cardigan. I think it's just going to be that, that go-to piece that I can just throw on around the house and it'll be nice and cute and it'll get used, which I'm especially excited for. Uh, so today I have a, a little bit more stitching to go up the side here and uh, I'll, I'll tell you kind of a, a little bit more of this process of what I'm doing as we go here tonight. But I am hoping to needle felt it a little bit tonight and then also uh, start cutting into it. So we'll see how that goes. So, all right, let's get going. All right, hello, hello, everyone. Oh, it, it reminded you and it worked. Yay, I'm happy, happy that <laughs> technology sometimes works. Okay, let me get you situated here. Okay, and I'm gonna zoomy you guys down. So here's the state of the state. Um, I'm still getting kind of a lot of opinions on this. I am gonna keep going um, so I can get to it uh, while I talk. So I'm gonna, I'm stitching a, a fourth line up here and we're almost done. Eh, I got two feet to go or so yet. So I wanna stitch that and I can kind of chat about the plan for this. So, talked to my mom uh, this afternoon and uh, kind of went over a game plan and she thinks this is going to work too, so <laughs> we'll just see. So, um, here's the end goal. Okay, so this is a little bit different than a normal steak. So, first of all, steak, a steak is when you... Uh, have a sweater and uh, or just anything really a knit piece uh, I think it could be like a crocheted piece too I've heard of crochet steaking uh, when I was doing some research but it's the idea of um, having basically a piece and then cutting into it and then most of the time adding on to it so adding adding like a place for like a whole extra knit placket for buttons or, or you know extra little knit edging for a, a pocket, uh, things like that. Um, so there's technique to do that. <laughs> and uh, the, the main, uh, like one of the big things is when you actually knit a piece like that, like if you're planning on doing that beforehand, uh, you leave a nice clean area of stitches of, of like stockinette stitch. Um, and then that just makes it, I guess, easier to do this. And then a lot of times you'll pick up the stitches and, uh, um, and then, then add on like a button, button ribbon, that sort of thing, button placket. Uh, that's not what's happening here. <laughs> so uh, uh, my end goal is to have a cardigan, uh, this is a little, uh, uh, it doesn't fit quite right. So it's a little um, narrow uh, for my liking to the point where, you know what, I could probably wear this as a normal sweater, but because the fit is just a little off, I'm, I know I'm not going to. So by cutting this, I am going to be making it a wearable piece that I'll actually wear around the house quite a bit, especially this time of year when it's negative five outside. Um, so yes, this is a perfectly fine sweater, <laughs> but I am, I am gonna go through with this update. Uh, so the challenge of this is that we have cabling in the center here, uh, which is a, probably a, like basically a huge no-no for, for steaking. But there's some, some things going for us in this case. Uh, and the, the biggest thing is that this is wool, like, 
purebred full wool. It's not any, this is, was knit like at least 50 years ago. So it's not, it's not, it's not like some super wash wool or something like that. It's actually uh, wool wool. So, and it's also been worn quite a bit and uh, um, you know, it's been around a little bit. So it has felted to some degree already. And uh, what I mean by that is uh, felting is when it, it works with animal fibers, particularly um, wool, like sheep's wool like this. And uh, the fibers, if they're agitated or they get heated up quite a bit, um, then uh, the little barbs along their along the uh, yarn, along the, the wool fibers will kind of grab onto each other and become like a, a solid felted piece. So that's done that are a little bit already. And I'm going to agitate it even more. I have a, I have a needle felting tool here. This has needles with barbs on the end. So I'm going to actually poke it down the center area here. And that's going to, um, that's going to lock those fibers together even more. And I think that's what's going to make it uh, able for me to actually cut into this without it falling apart, even though it is on a cable, <laughs> cable knit area. Oh, Rockin' Robin, uh, am I doing my afternoon... Oh, my afternoon walk. Oh, <laughs> I, I am. So I am still doing my afternoon walks. John and I have been really good at that. We did it a little earlier than our normal time today because I had to uh, drop off some packages. So we carried those packages <laughs> with us. Uh, but we are. So we've done it every day this year, even though it is like negative five. It was pretty cold. Oh, Sylvia's asking, did my mom wear this at the time of gifting? So yes, so my mom apparently wore this a lot in high school. She said it was great for ice skating. She would wear it uh, with a turtleneck underneath. It has like a large, a large neck hole. So uh, like a boat neck, almost like a small boat neck, neck hole. And so she wore... Uh, wore a turtleneck underneath. And it it's... It's like a little form fitting and that's why that's why it's too small for me right now. It's just a little too form fitting for what for what I like, but it's nice and long too. So yes, she did wear it. Um and she even said she's like, Oh, I didn't I didn't I forgot that you had had that or whatever. And I'm like, I you know, I don't need to do this or whatever. And she's like, No, no, it's it's fine, but uh, she's like, I must have really liked it to have kept it this long. <laughs> so, uh, so I think she's excited to see how this turns out too, and it'll be fun to actually wear. Is there a reason I'm hand stitching this rather than just using a sewing machine? Um, nope. <laughs> and, okay, so let me talk about that for a little bit. So I didn't know anything about steaking before. So again, that's like cutting into a knit piece. Uh, if you're going to cut into a knit piece, you have to finish the edge somehow so it doesn't unravel, right? Uh, so some suggestions were like a big, that's, you know, theoretically that is what I should have done is, um, and I'm, I'm actually going to still do that. So I'll talk about that in a sec. Um, but I could just use a sewing machine to sew up the side. So that would really be kind of locking these in a little bit more because it's smaller stitches. It'd be a little bit more hidden. But I did read that you could hand stitch it with a back stitch like this, even though this is these are kind of pretty big. Um, you can also crochet, like pick up stitches and do a crocheted line and do that really tight. That's another way to kind of lock, lock the edge. Um, I'm not sure I needed to do this at all, frankly. Um, but we will see once I start cutting into it. So at this point in my head, this is a little more decorative more than anything else. I kind of like the red with it. Uh, this is this is red wool too, so it'll it'll shrink and move with the um, wool, the white wool here. Um, so I'm just kind of doubling down on it because I think it's it's pretty at this point. Uh, 
But theoretically, mechanically, I, I'm holding in this edge a little bit. <laughs> uh, but I am going to sew. So I am taking some advice <laughs> from you guys. I know, I know this is a little all over the place and kind of crazy, but... Uh, I am going to sew some, I bought some, I went to Joanne's this weekend and I got some Grosgrain ribbon. Uh, I wanted skinnier stuff, but they didn't have any. Of course they have like two rows filled with, with ribbon and then the like one color I want, this is the only, only size they had. So it's a little thick, but I'm going to actually be sewing this to the inside. Uh, so it'll have two rows of stitches of machine stitches on either side of the ribbon. So that's going to just add to the security. And, uh, um, it's also going to add, it's going to hold it and keep it from stretching once I do have it cut. So, uh, uh I am going to, that's going to add some stability to this. So I know some people were nervous about that, I think. Um, so that is going to add some stability, first of all with the machine stitching and second with the fact that that big fat ribbon is going to be kind of holding it there. So I think that's going to be good because yeah, otherwise this would probably get stretched out on the edge. Um, so this is the part that I was in my head about a little bit today, but talked with my mom and, and uh, we kind of decided that there's logic behind, behind this. So this is, this is what I'm thinking of doing. Uh, I'm going to, well, first of all, finish this stitching. I got just a couple more inches here, and then I will, um, I'm going to attempt to cut. So I am going to just kind of, I'm going to needle felt a little bit at the bottom, and then I'm going to cut like a couple inches, and we're going to just see how this goes. If it ends up that this whole thing explodes and starts coming apart, which I don't think it will, because, you know, I think it's a little felted already. Uh, then we will not cut anymore <laughs> and come up with a, a little bit more of a game plan or I will just try and needle felt it a little bit more uh, and then just go little by little. At worst, I can put a fabric edging along all of this. So cover up each of these edges with like, you know, like I'm binding a quilt or something, just put like a little edge on. So that's, that's my backup scenario. Uh, but we almost kind of think that I might not even need to needle felt much at all. So I'm going to start with the needle felting and we'll cut in just to see what happens. But I might put a cut a little bit further and see if it does anything. And if, if not, like starts to unravel or anything. And if not, then we might just start, start cutting. Oh, Sylvia says flash of pretty red. Yes, so we'll have like this pretty red on the front and then the, on the inside, it will have like that little red flash. So this is just gonna be like a cardigan. So this is another thing that came up. Um, people were unsure, like um, cutting into it and making the cardigan, it's not gonna magically get wider, right? <laughs> uh, like how am I gonna close it? I have no intention of closing this as a cardigan. So it's more just like throwing it on uh, um, other long sleeves and just having it open in the front. That's that's my goal. That's kind of how I wear a bunch of stuff. And, you know, when I get chilly, I'll just throw it on like that. Um, so I have no intention of actually making this close. So I don't care that it's going to be big and open in the front. Um, if, again, if I was doing a normal steak process, I would probably be making sure I'm doing this really secure and then picking up the stitches and knitting a whole extra part on either side to add buttons and stuff, but that's that's not my goal. Ooh, uh, Stormy says, I've steaked a store-bought sweater before and crocheted the edges. Oh, it worked. Oh, that's exciting. So the by like picking up the stitches and instead of what I'm doing here with the, the hand stitching, doing the um, crochet. Ooh, that's interesting. See, I would like to try, now that I know what steaking is, I kind of want to try this for real, like with intention. <laughs> or, or like you said, on a store-bought one, because um, with this one, we still do have this big problem of, that we're doing this on a cable. That's, you know, not theoretically a good idea. Uh, but I'm sticking to it at this point. 
I don't think I'm going to ruin this. I mean, I know I'm ruining it from the sense of uh, I am cutting into this pretty cable and this person made this and it's just got so much work into it and I'm actually cutting into it. But I'm also feel like it, feeling like it's, you know, I'll get to use it and it'll have a second life. And I do actually want to, my mom texted the story a couple nights ago when we were here. She, in the middle of our, our live here, she texted the story of it. And that's when we found out that she did not actually knit it. It was her boyfriend from high school's mom knit it. Um, so I'm going to actually print out that text from her onto like some fabric. And I'm going to sew it into the uh, sweater here. So I'll, I'll have the story of the sweater. I don't know. I think it's going to be way more valuable being used and having that story. And then, you know, having, uh, you know, me a generation later like working on it and stitching it I just think that adds to it and you know as far as a beautiful piece there's other beautiful pieces out there that exist that you know can show off cables and have this yarn and, and that sort of stuff so I don't know I'm feeling okay with doing it to this okay so we're almost there I'm on that top little um collar so we're getting there so I'm gonna weave once I get to the top here I'm gonna weave in the end so weave in the top and the bottom oh one last thing I do want to um before I cut into this uh, I'm not putting on a zipper so I Chris I have no intention of this being able to close um so that's that's um what makes this a bit different than a normal sticking project I think so I'm, I'm not I'm, uh, I'm opening it up to be a cardigan, but I'm not with the intention that I'll be able to close it at all. So if I, if I could do that, I would have just left it as a sweater. Um, I just want something to throw on. Um, since you're doing it, go for a letter rip. Yeah, so, so um, the one last thing I'm going to do before I cut into this is I do want to measure the length and cut the ribbon that will go on the inside because this might actually stretch out afterwards. Um, I want this to like lay how it is right now um, after, after it's done. And I'm gonna do that by just, I'll measure what I need for the ribbon and cut two pieces right away. And then I figure um, I will do the felting and the cutting because I don't, I'm not sure I'd be able to sew this very well on my sewing machine. Um, all the way, the whole length without it just gumming up the sewing machine. Uh, just because, you know, I have a small sewing machine and this is a lot to stuff through. But once it's cut open, I'll be able to sew it really easily, I think. Uh, so I want to have my ribbon pre-cut because then I can like pin it at the top and the bottom and the middle and kind of ease the rest into place. So even if this wants to stretch right when I cut it, uh, having that ribbon pre-cut is going to allow me to uh, allow me to uh, counteract that when I sew it. So that's that's the thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to, uh, like, oh, we're at the end here, so I'm going to weave in this end. Then we'll measure quickly, and I'll cut a piece of ribbon right away, too, probably, just so I have that visual. And then then we'll, we'll get to the real deal. We'll get to actually cutting this. So all these stitches on the inside will actually be covered up with, oops, uh, covered up with the, I'm going to go back and forth two more times. Um, it'll be covered up with the Grosgrain ribbon. <laughs> uh, Nox says, oh, I believe in you. <laughs> Good. Because <laughs> this, is, this is all a question mark, right? Depending on how it unravels or doesn't unravel when I start cutting, that will determine how much we'll actually cut tonight. Like, if it, if it seems like I need to do surgery on it like immediately then it'll go slower uh but if it um goes if it's just easy peasy then we'll do the whole thing so again i'm just tucking in this and i need to snip that there get a clean end here 
So, really, um, these, theoretically, these or red lines are holding in the stitches a little bit, but, eh, it's more decorative at this point, I think. This is going to be a little short here. Ugh. I'm going to get it in first and then re-thread re it here. Oh! Uh... Naxulali. I don't know. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, says, I'm in the middle of a very let's see how it goes quilting project and I can relate. Yeah, I kind of feel like that's all my projects. Like, hey, let's give this a try. See how it goes. <laughs> I think I'm scaring, scaring some people with this. All right. So, like I said, I do want to kind of measure this out quickly. I'm going to give it, I'm stretching it a little bit because I think with gravity it'll, it'll hang a little bit and I don't want it to kind of bubble up. Um, so let's just stretch it a hair and I do have my little measuring tape here. Let's see how we do. We're at t like 24 and a quarter. Oh, maybe I'm not quite, let's get a little lower here. Ooh, okay, if I'm stretching right in the middle there. Yeah, so like, I don't know, 24 and a half maybe. Eh, or it could be closer to 25. Um. You know what, I'm going to call it 24 and 3 quarters. Maybe I should get, well, you know what, I'm just going to cut, cut this right away. So 24 and 3 quarters. I think I want to add a half inch to either side because I'll tuck that, tuck that underneath. So 24 and 3 quarters will be 25 and 3 quarters. So I'm going to just measure this. I think I'm going to do it on my mat, though. That makes me feel better. Okay, so 20. Let's just, um, here, I'm going to get my scissors out that I'll be using later. My monster, perfect, beautiful scissors. Let's trim that. And at 25 and 3 quarters, let's see. Let's go by tens here. Okay, 10, 20, 20, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 3 quarters. Ugh, of course this, all right, I'm going to get the actual ruler out. Ugh, and a cutting. Right, one, two, three, four, five, and three quarters. So let's go right here. There you guys can see. Tucked way down in here. There. So this is going to be um, on the inside, and I'm going to need two of these, so I'm going to do another one right away. Uh, but ultimately, I will be tucking the edge over like a half inch and sewing it to the back um, on both sides. So this will add some more sturdiness to the inside. Oh, you'd iron, um, iron the ribbon and add some stabilizer. Oh, okay. The knit will stretch less when you stitch it. Okay. Add some stabilizer. I may have some of that... I may actually have some of that. <laughs> so, all right, this is a tomorrow project anyway, but let's get, um, that's a good idea. I should iron it as well. Um, so let's, let's get another, another 25 and three quarters here. So 10. And I'm, I think there's tons of extra um, ribbon if I totally mess this up. 20. Three, four, five, and three quarters is right there. Okay. 
great. So this is pre-prepped. So that's what I wanted because like I said, once I cut into the sweater, that might be, um, that might get stretchy, right? So if I have this pre-cut, that means I can pin the top to the top of the sweater, pin the bottom to the bottom, kind of figure out the middle and pin that. And then I can like pin all the way along the side. And then when I sew, I can make sure that I'm not stretching it as I go. Cause I'll have all those pins in there uh, kind of helping me out. Cause it is going to want to stretch. I might have to put like some sort of, um, I might have to put some sort of like paper on the front or something. Cause my machine, my feed dogs on the machine might want to like catch on all this wool. So I wonder, maybe I'll have to put like some tissue paper down first that I'll tear off after we sew that. I don't know. That's, that's, that's a tomorrow problem. <laughs> all right. But I think the concept of it all in my head makes, makes sense. So, all right, let's, let's do this. Oh, Marcia says, yes, good that I pre-cut to stabilize. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's good. That's good. All right, so I have, we're going to do a little bit of needle felting uh, before we cut, but we are getting there. We are like on the verge of cutting this. Oh, use a Teflon foot. So, okay, the other problem is I only have my one machine right now, and it is a 1938 um, Kenmore sewing machine. Uh that has one foot. <laughs> so it's going to be the, the foot that I end up using for this. Um, iron the fusing tape first with the ribbon, then cut. So, well, I think I'm going to cut. I'm, I'm cutting first. I know it sounds crazy. Oh, I could iron. I could fuse, fuse it on first. You're right. <laughs> Let me think about that. I don't know. I'm tempted to just use like wonder clips and clip this thing on when we're done. I don't know. I think I'm going to just keep going. Uh, I get what you're saying. That makes sense. I'm just not sure I have everything available right now to do that. And I think this is still going to work. Okay. This is already, this already kind of lays how it's going to lay. Oh, so that's actually, Jada says, I, I saw your Kenmore in the background of my videos. That's actually another, another Kenmore. I have, um, uh, I have like this pretty black Kenmore. It's got a crinkle finish. So that will be out here tomorrow when I, um, sew those ribbons on. Um, but yep. So this other one's from the seventies, but that one isn't quite working quite right. The feed dogs, um, don't stay up. Ugh. My machines are in a state right now. All right, before I get going here, this is my needle felting tool. It, I have three needles in right now. If you look super duper close, I don't know if you guys can see, but there are, it's kind of barbed, like it kind of, it hurts. So there's like within the shaft of, of it is um, little kind of prickers on it. And uh, that is going to help felt this together. So I want to give that a go first. I, I don't know if this is gonna really work, but and this is kind of a slow going process, but what I'm doing is just kind of agitating this end, uh, agitating it here right in the middle. And what this is doing is just gonna hold these fibers together even more. So I kind of want to like go up and down like the first three inches, like getting into the cables. And then I'm just gonna cut. And if it seems to be holding together, I'll keep cutting and then I'll just um, needle needle felt where it feels like it needs it. I'm not sure if this is doing anything. Ugh, hopefully this works. Um, and I'll just keep cutting. If it, yeah, if it, if it doesn't, if it seems like it's going to come apart, I may, um, oh yeah, this is doing something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This feels like it's like stuck together a little bit more. If it starts coming apart, then we might switch things up and maybe I will actually put the ribbon the ribbon on first. Like if this all starts fraying, I'll attempt sewing that on first, even though it's gonna be super annoying on my sewing machine. Yeah, this feels like it's more together. So I'm gonna go up to this cable here and uh, then we'll snip in a little bit. Oh, I'm scared and now I'm like, ugh, do I really wanna do this? But I do, I wanna wear it. 
I've gotten better over the years at just doing it. I used to have like all my pretty fabric on my um, pretty fabric on my shelf and I never wanted to cut into it but then I'm like you know what I'm honoring it more by using it and cutting it so um, I started just using up my fabric and that's kind of my feeling now on, on all this stuff like I'm gonna honor it more by actually using it and having it out here so that's what we're gonna do all right I'm gonna just try this now you guys <laughs> All right, Bama, who says it? Don't be scared, it'll work. So, all right, I'm gonna just go little by little. I mean, I'm sure I'd get a straighter line by going like all at once, but I don't know. I'm cutting in the middle of these two lines seems like it's, it's gonna be okay. So, ah, here we go. Oh, I'm scared and this is weird. All right, I kind of went up to here. So, all right, let's let's kind of assess assess where we're at here. Wow. Okay, this is like totally held together. I'm not sure this is moving at all. At least down here where I felt it a lot. So here's the um, here's the cable. Um, I I don't think that's coming apart at all. I'm gonna go a little farther to an area that I didn't needle felt and we'll, we'll compare, okay? So I'm gonna go into the non-needle felted area. Cause like I said, this has been worn a lot and theoretically felted a little bit. Okay, so now here I can tell a difference. So I am gonna, I am going to continue needle felting. So here, I'm gonna zoom you guys in a little bit more here. Oops, there. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully you can see a little bit more, but uh, you can see the difference here. So here I can see each kind of thread all by itself, but but here it's all like jammed together, right? So what that means, um, what that says to me is to that this needle felting is actually being effective. <laughs> so I am going to now, those areas that I just cut, I am going to needle felt those. So let's take a look. So right now you can see, you can see all the separate pieces. I'm going to just needle felt that a little bit. And we'll see if we can get that to change. I'm going to do both sides. I might actually have to trim that again. So it might be like a do this for three inches and then cut. But I'm my intention is to leave this a raw edge. So I am not going to I'm not going to finish this in any way. I'm going to leave it just an unfinished edge. So this will get. Um, this will get more and more felted. All right, see, so that that's definitely um, holding that together a bit more. So I think that's doing its job. Get a little bit more on the top side of these cables. <laughs> so this might be a slow roll of a process. Um, nope, I'm not putting a zipper in. Um, this is just going to be, I'm going to go till, till like I have the, the top of my little styrofoam thing there. I'm going to go up to there and then we'll cut up to there. This is just going to be a raw edge open. I'm not going to do any sort of closure. My intention is just to be able to kind of throw this on and I'm never going to, I'm never going to close it. It's just going to be, you know, basically a shawl with, with arms, right? Um, so that's my thought. Wow, I have not needle felt it in a while. It's so fun to have this tool out again. So if you're, if you um, have never seen one of these before, or or like the needle, the needles, these act, these needles actually come out. So um, I can replace them with other needles. Where you put the it, oh yeah, so now we can actually see this. So uh, the ribbon. So I, I will tuck under the edge for like, uh, this is thicker than I needed, but it's all that they had there. Um, I will uh, put it there and it's gonna sew into the back right here. So it's gonna be like this big, pretty ribbon. So when I'm walking, it'll be kind of like open like that. It's just kind of sweet, I think. So that's gonna go right there. And that's actually gonna add some machine stitching along the edge too. Um, so that's gonna even make this more kind of secure. 
Oh, <laughs> thanks. I, I, uh, someone mentioned, oh, you gotta match your nails, uh, for this, because sometimes my nails just sort of end up matching, and I did have a red like this, but I, I realized that when I, I, I got rid of all my old nail polish, and that was, that was one of them. It was just getting, it was like a decade old, and it was just goopy and not working well, but, so I don't have any nice red nail polish anymore, so that doesn't seem right. But this pink kind of matches, <laughs> matches the, uh, um, needle felting tool here. And this wouldn't work unless uh, um, this was wool, so I think this is going to be fine. Okay, let's cut up to here and see how we did. If I have to do it more or less, it's actually kind of stuck to the styrofoam a little bit, so let's lift that up. All right, I'm going about to there. I'm going to just stay in the middle best I can. This is a very, very nice scissors that can cut through anything, so I'm not worried about that at all. Yeah, look, so that edge has been needle felted. I can't see any individual fibers. That's totally going to stay together, I think. And, you know, the more the more I rub on this, the more it's going to going to stick together. A nail wafer thing. Oh, see, so I, yeah, I've, okay, oh, last for two weeks, so I've heard of those. I haven't ever used those. I have to do my nails. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in my, <laughs> I do hand related things like all day long, like with boxes and stuff. This is turning out great. I'm going to keep going. Um, and so my nails just get torn apart. So I got to redo them like all the time. So I'm always wary of those little paper things. Um, just because I feel like I'd immediately ruin them. All right, this is great. So I'm just going kind of the length of my, um, dang, this is going to be halfway at this point. Uh, I'm just going to go the length of this little styrofoam thing again. I think we're going to get this thing fully cut today. It's only 9.07 here. We got like 20 more minutes that we can stabity stab and get this going together. And this is working so much better. Like this really, I wasn't expecting this to be, here, let me get close. So you guys can see how there's just, you can't hardly see any fiber. Like there's maybe a little thread that's popped up, but barely. And that's going to just blend in the more that this is uh, agitated and rubbed. But yeah, that's, that's really holding together. And so we got very lucky with this, what this was knit out of. This is just like, a perfect pure just like wool. This is before the days of like blends. <laughs> exactly. So Stormy says you could always wrap the edge with the ribbon and sew it on. So that was originally when I first started talking about this project, my my thought was that I would take just like bias tape. So not like ribbon like this, but bias tape and and fold in it would just go over the edge, but it'd be like fat. So it'd be like you know, going over the edge and it would just be kind of hiding that edge. But then uh, um, people started talking about steaking and I looked that up a bit more and uh, that's when I started doing these stitches and I'm like, okay, that's kind of cute. And and I learned more and more and how, <laughs> how it might actually be a disaster because I'm at, I am on cables here. And uh, um, so it's just possibly going to be a nightmare but so far so good and I, and I like the final solution I like that it's going to be just it's like decorative stitching on the outside and I do hand embroidery stuff all the time so it's nice to have like a little hand embroidered kind of detail and then with that um with that ribbon on the inside I think that's just going to be kind of fun and kind of flashy so it'll be like this but still like kind of I mean red and white together like this feels traditional too so it's like traditional with like a little kind of simple update. Really, I could felt across this whole thing if I wanted to, but I don't think I need to. And I might go up the edge, like if I see if there's any little bit kind of that needs a little bit more, I can always, nothing seems to be like just completely falling apart. So we're in really good shape here, I think. All right, let's cut again. Oh, Marcia says, get new red nail polish before I finish it so I can model model this with the red nail polish. Well, any excuse to, like, 
splurge on some new nail polish is always fun. So I'm cutting slow because I'm trying to be careful, not because the scissors isn't doing the job. I'm just trying to eyeball this nicely. All right. Ooh, it looks like I could have done it a little bit more there. I can see a little bit more of the fibers, but honestly, I don't think it's going to be a big deal, but let's just hit it a few more times. Okay, I'm totally loving this already. I can feel myself wearing it all of a sudden now that this is open. Ugh, okay, cool. And like I said, this is gonna just felt even more the more it's like rubbed on. Um, what I don't want it to do is unravel before it gets to, or like, you know, underneath these or something, but I kind of don't think that's gonna happen. Oh, it's kind of cute. It's just like a cute little edge with it raw. Yeah, this is holding up um, really well. So it has, you know, it's been around, it's been worn a lot, and it's, um, you know, 50 years old too. So it's been, well, I don't know, that doesn't help with felting, but it's, it's not new. So it has been washed, it has been, you know, at some point in its lifetime. Um, so it's already, the fibers are already kind of, holding itself together so we're just doing it a little bit more but but um if you weren't here a little while ago we did cut into it without doing this a little bit and you could see a difference so so it was a test to see if if this is even worth it all this needle felting but it did seem different so the difference was like i could see the fibers individually versus it just looking like one floofed edge we're going for the floofed edge. Oh, what is Ellen's asking? What is needle felting usually for used for? So you can actually do whole sculptures with um, needle felting to, uh, tools like this. So normally, uh, um, a common thing would be to use it with more of a of roving. So. Like here's, here's where I grabbed it from. So you can have like rove, like wool roving like this, and you can actually form it into shapes and uh, stab right into it. And this stabbing, it's gonna just make it. I don't have a good example like nearby, but it will like start forming it into this tight, tight, tight thing. And that's what's going, and then you can like do sculpture. You can keep adding to it. Uh, maybe tomorrow, I do have a couple small needle felted pieces. Uh, maybe tomorrow I'll grab some uh, just to show what else you can make, make out of them. But basically you are agitating the fibers and getting them closer and closer and tighter and tighter. So you can do like full sculpture. You can also do it flat. So, um, you know, I could actually take some of, some of that roving and you know make a design right on here and just by stabbing it to the fabric here it would like I could do like a heart right here out of that roving and uh, it would just stay it would be like glued into the not glued but it would be it would become a part of the fibers of, of this so it's pretty pretty like neat it's a neat um, if you just google like needle felted sculpture you'll see immediately, like people do amazing, amazing work with it. And it's really fun. Not fun if you stab yourself though. <laughs> These are sharp little puppies for sure. Oh, there's someone on here that does flat felt projects. Oh yeah, you can do whole portraits. Um, you know, I, I've seen a lot of like dog and cat portraits that look freaking realistic. Um, done with needle felting and this is the process you're literally just stabbing zillions and zillions of times so i'm not doing buttons i am not making this wider in any way i'm just going to leave this a raw edge so uh hence the needle felting as well i don't want it to fall apart um so it will be open there's i, have, I don't have any intention of it closing in any way it's just to like throw on 
I could, however, if I wanted to at some point pick up the stitches probably and um, pick up the stitches and sew something like that on if I wanted to, knit something like that on. But I'll probably be moved on to other projects and this is going to live like this. I, I, I do want to print out that story though and sew it in yet. So And I'll have to do that at my parents' house because they have an inkjet printer. Um, so I'm going to do it there. I didn't find anything at Joann's that could do that on a laser printer and I just have a color laser here. What I like about leaving this open on the front too is that you can still see the cable, that it came from the cable a little bit. Ah, here it is. So let's see. That's looking pretty, pretty glued together. Um, maybe a little, little bit here and there, but nah, I don't think that's bad at all. Ah, it's so fun. <laughs> okay, so let's see. I think we only have like one more section to go here. Maybe one in a little bit. And then we got this thing cut. We could actually, oh yeah, a little bit more than one more section. Um, we could we could pin this ribbon on today too. That'd be cool. Get that all set up um, before we, oops, I'm making a mess here now, uh, before we sew it tomorrow. So tomorrow I'm getting the sewing machine out just to show that again. I'm gonna sew, we, pre, we cut these already the size that we want and it's gonna be sewn onto the inside edge. So this is gonna have even more support by machine sewn stitches, and this is gonna help um, support it. I may see if I have some fusible or something um, to stick down on here. I, I think I might, I have an image in my head of where that would be, but I don't, I don't know for sure. But at worst, we'll just um, clip it, clip the hell out of it here, and um, I'll sew it from the back. I do think I might have to put tissue paper down on the front though, because I think this is gonna just, or maybe even typing paper. I think this is gonna, the wool, I think my machine is gonna be not happy. Um, I think it's just gonna wanna claw at it. So that's something we're gonna have to be aware of, I think, when we stitch. So I'll sew on, I'm gonna sew on both sides of the ribbon and, and the top and the bottom too, because that will be folded over just by a half inch. So we added a half inch on each side to fold over and we'll just be zoop, zoop, zoop. But I'll probably be going up both edges. Um, Cause the trick is I don't have like a huge machine. So I'm not gonna be able to stuff all this very well into like the neck of the machine. So I wanna, I'll sew on like the one edge twice and then we'll get the top and the bottom. If that makes sense. It'll make sense tomorrow. Marsha said I would not use fusible. Why is that? Or like an like an interface thing or something. Oh, I don't have that. I would only have like a fusible thing. Oh, Deborah says it amazes me how good it looks for being 50 years old. I'm so glad your idea worked. <laughs> I'm so glad this is working too. And I'm I'm happy I stayed in the center. Um, we were gonna try and offset this because we thought it'd be a little bit um, easier to cut in here. Can I do just do ribbon on the inside? Uh, that is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing sewing the ribbon on the inside. But yeah, I'm I'm happy this is this felting is working so well. So I don't I'm not going to like lift it up really. I might just lift it up to show you guys quick here when we're done, but I don't want to like put too much stretch on it. Uh, until that ribbon is, is sewn in. Ooh, Sylvia says, I have a kit for felting wool into a woodpecker. Oh, that sounds so cute. That's really what I've, ooh, I thought I broke the needle. Nope, we're good still. Um, that's really what I've needle felted the most as far as sculpture goes is, um, is, um, uh, sculpting like little birds, tiny little birds. I'm a little scared to look up at comments because I'm like stabbing this and <laughs> I don't want to stab my fingers. Yep, I am, uh, what am I doing now exactly is I am agitating the wool. The, this is a 100% wool content um, fiber sweater here. Like old school wool, not any like super wash or anything nowadays. This is a 50 year old sweater and I'm using a needle felting 
tool here. It's actually just three. It's a, it's a holder. This is just holds the individual needles. You can do this with the individual needle. And so I have three needles in here just to make it go faster. Uh, and these agitate the fibers of the yarn even more, making them stick together like felt. And so I am doing that before cutting down the middle. I am turning this into a cardigan. So this is what we have done so far. So uh, see all these fibers just, you can't hardly tell individual fibers. That's because I've, I've felted them together. And it's just helping keep the edge because I don't want this to all unravel. Which I'm not sure it would have because, like I said, this is kind of pre-felted a little bit just because it's old and it's been washed back in the day and um, it's been worn uh, quite a bit. Uh, but this is like a security measure, <laughs> just making sure it's being held together. All right, so I'm I'm gonna cut this, and then we just have the collar. The collar didn't quite fit on my my little styrofoam piece that's underneath here. So let's get this a go. All right, here we go. It's almost gonna be a part. So normally you would finish this in some way, but I'm not going to, um, except for putting ribbon on the middle to stabilize it, or on the inside, um, on the inside part here. Uh, but normally you would pick up the stitches and you'd sew like a whole other panel on and you'd put like buttons and stuff in there. I am not doing any of that. I am just gonna let it be like a, a little raw edge like this. So this is, gonna what it, this is what it's gonna look like when it's done. It's just gonna be fluffy on the edge have these two little strips and it'll just have that ribbon there so all right this is our last little bit and then we're done so i feel like i had to do kind of this pearl and knit area at least at the bottom more than i had to do the cables which seems a little weird oh my god i can't believe this is gonna be part i'm so tempted to just put it on right away but i want to put the ribbon in first so i'm gonna hold off and we are going to throw that ribbon in via the sewing machine tomorrow just to stabilize this edge um, before it's all um, before it stretches out I want I want it to kind of stay in a sort of position I'll I'll um, put a little video replay of this up so this whole thing will be up on YouTube and Facebook in its entirety but I'll do a little edited down version of what we did tonight and post a short clip if, if anyone missed the rest of the cutting it's it's been a slow roll of cutting because i've been going like uh five inches needle felting and then another five inches and then cutting and but it's really working well i think and i don't think i needed these stripes <laughs> we kind of went over that uh but i i think it's cute oh, the poking really did help the thread stay together it really really did so we did a test um, like I, I needle felted a bit at the bottom and then I went a little bit further and uh, here we go. <laughs> and the fibers really did physically look um, more put together on the part that we needle felted. Ah, look, it's a cardigan. <laughs> all right, let's just do a double check on this edge. Like look at, look at this edge. This is all, this is all like super duper felted together. Um, all right, I, I just want to double check if there's anything that just kind of seems like it can get away from itself. Gosh, I really don't think so, though. Eh, that, I don't know. My, I had a, my brain focused on this little guy here for some reason. Let's just, let's just get him. Like here, it doesn't look quite as blended as some other places, so theoretically, I could just keep stabbing. I could keep stabbing this edge and it'd get harder and harder and tighter and tighter. <laughs> my little happy giggles make me happy. Oh my gosh, I live for this. Just to like play with these ideas and see if it's gonna work. <laughs> my plan definitely got updated and uh, stuff by talking to everyone. So that was so helpful, all of your guys' comments. Um, this needle felting thing was like, oh yeah, that's gonna help. Um, so, and I knew I had, I'm just going to get this little floof right here. Um, I knew I had a needle felting tool stored away somewhere. I hadn't used it in a while. It's always fun to break this guy out. I will bring, I'll, I will show you the needle felted, um, like what else you can do with needle felting. These little sculptures and stuff. I'll, I'll bring a couple of those over here 
tomorrow. Oh, actually, I think I only have one here. I think the other one's at my parents' house. But it'll give you a little idea of what you can do with with this process other than what I'm doing here. Yeah, that looks good. Let's let's double check this side. Oh, I am going to have to hold this up, aren't I? It's just too cute. Oh, wow, look at This is all, um, you can see it's a little stained here. That's, like, from me pushing the, the, um, the, uh, these fibers into it. It's just, like, excess fibers there. You need a back surface that you can stab into. And it can't be, like, another piece of wool because you'll be putting, um, wool there. Ooh, red, red on the cuffs would really put it together. So I, I had talked about picking up these stitches and adding a little bit of red. Man, even just going around the edge with red, just like a whip stitch would be kind of cute. So uh, once I put it on, I'll, I'll check the length. So if I feel like the length should be a little bit longer, which in my head, that's what it needed to be a little bit. Um, like if I'm trying to remember, I thought they were a little short. So I, I would love to add maybe like a, an, a half inch or an inch little cuff to this little addition to this so I may I may do that so we'll get we'll get this part done and uh, um, so tomorrow we'll be putting the ribbon onto the inside to give it a little bit more stability and just a nice flash of red uh, to go with the front but yeah I might consider I think I'm getting a little paranoid now. When it gets later in the evening, <laughs> like closer to 9.30, and I'm a little tireder, then perfectionism kicks in, and so now I, I feel like I probably don't need to be doing what I'm doing here now. I feel like I'm overkilling it now. But, I mean, it really does change change the structure of this, though, doing the, the needle felting. I think we're good. I think oh, this all looks, looks fine and fluffy and together. Ah, okay. So, uh, oh my god, I want to try this on, but I don't want to stretch it out quite yet. But let's just kind of, I'm going to lift, I'm going to get you guys both higher, just so we can take a look at it really quickly. Um, all right, so bear with me a sec. I'm going to get a little bit up higher. There we go. So there's it more, um, there's, there's kind of more of the feel of it. So theoretically when it's on, it'll probably be look a whole lot more like this, a little bit more open here and just kind of uh, just be something I can throw on really quickly. I think it's cute with just the little red stripes there. Yeah, I think that's nice. So yeah, and then the what we'll be doing tomorrow is I'll, I'll iron this. If I can find a stabilizer, I'll use it. Otherwise we'll just pin. So I don't think we have enough time tonight yet, but so tomorrow um, we pre-measured these. So I measured kind of how long and look already. Wow. Okay. So already my stitches are pulling this together because look how much longer um, my ribbon is. So this is a good, so we have our ribbon is about just like two inches at least longer than what our original cut was. So this, so my stitching is already wanting to suck this together. Um, so we will kind of pull on this a little bit. Uh, I'm going to just tuck this under. We will clip or pin to the bottom. Let's tuck it under a half inch. That's, that's what we uh, measured. And I will do the same at the top. So I'll just put a little clip here. And then we'll do the same at the top. And then we'll kind of find a good middle. And we'll match the middle. Maybe I should mark the middle on both sides. And so they, so they match up. And uh, <laughs> you guys are all gonna have to tell me that this is this is um, the plan. Remind me that this is what I'm doing. So I'll mark the middle. I'll line these both up and mark the middle so the middles are the same because I want them to hang the same. And then I'm just going to clip the bottom and the top and then we'll clip the middle. So I'll fold the middle here. And uh, then we will kind of, I'll see how it's um, kind of wavy. We'll stretch it out and then clip and then we'll stretch it out again and clip, and then I will sew it on. So that's we'll be like easing the the knit part back into place. Great. That was I think that was good cutting these first, and we'll we'll give them a little iron and stuff too. Uh, but yeah, I think just some clips, and then you know I'll, I'll maybe turn it inside out so it's easier. So we'll sew down one edge, 
probably the one that's close just because I think it'll be easier. And then we'll sew down the other edge and then, um, you know, the tucked under piece, we'll, we'll sew that a little bit. So that's the deal. So I'm, I'm not going to add any buttons. This is, this is it. It's just going to be like an open, an open piece, but ah, I'm excited for it. So, uh, um, all right. I think this is going to be, this turned out way better than I thought this cutting and the, the needle felting of it all. Um, I'll definitely put it on tomorrow once we have these sewn, but I am wary of doing that. Um, just cause I don't want to affect these too much before I have it stabilized. But honestly, I don't think I need to do anything else. I really probably don't even need these, but I don't know. <laughs> I got them now and I think they'll be cute on the inside here. So we might just go for it. Um, still, but man, I don't know if we need it. Maybe I will, I'll throw this on tomorrow and we'll see if, if, um, if I should do that or let me know. Um, I'll post, a, a, I'll, uh, I'll, um, just checking my phone up there. So I'll post maybe another video of working on this in the day tomorrow and, uh, we'll get a poll of, should I even put these, uh, ribbons in? I think we might be okay. Just like this. I'll try it on. We'll try it on for like a sec tomorrow and I'll take a video and then, then see if it stretches out weird or not. And if it does, maybe I will need, need those ribbons. So anyway, this has been fun. <laughs> uh, are they color fast? So that's a good question. Ooh, maybe I should do a little test. It says a hundred percent polyester. Um, which I think bodes well for color fastness. Uh, I'll take a little sample of the ribbon uh, before tomorrow and put it in some hot water and see if if any color comes out. So, um, yeah, then that's a good point. We should make sure that's color fast. So, all right, everyone, uh, I'll throw up a little video of this later uh, tomorrow, and uh, we'll make a decision on do we put the ribbon in or not. I don't know if we're going to need it. So I'm, but I'm happy with this so far. <laughs> so thank you guys so much again. We'll be back here at 8.30 PM central time tomorrow and uh, finish this guy up and I'll, I'll try it on and see if we need uh, some cuffs on there too. That'd be fun to think through that. <laughs> All right, everyone for realsies, have a good evening and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.